This season, because we have to shelter in place, we're bringing you virtual holiday presentations, activities, and performances. Today, we're going to see a 15-minute version of Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, performed by actors Connor McGuigan and Heather Stewart. So after the 15 minutes, you have plenty of time to shop locally online. We are really trying to encourage that this holiday season to support our artists and small businesses. Uh, you can visit LackawannaMarkets.com, a county initiative to support our small businesses, but there's plenty of other uh, sites and information online around the county for you to shop locally. Uh, so we really encourage that. And also you can order takeout from our wonderful restaurants around the county. English writer Charles Dickens lived 1812 to 1870. He wrote A Christmas Carol in just six weeks, fueled by some financial difficulties. The book was published on December 19, 1843, and it was for him a social commentary on the terrible problem of poverty and child labor in England at the time. The book was an immediate success, and Dickens is often said to have invented Christmas through his festive depictions. The images I have been showing were created for the first 1843 edition by John Leach. He was a famous cartoonist and political satirist and his gorgeous illustrations also helped add to the image we now have of a 19th century Christmas. I have endeavored in this ghostly little tale to raise the ghost of an idea, which shall not put my readers out of humor with themselves, with the season, with each other, or with me. May it haunt their houses pleasantly and no one wish to lay it. The Faithful Friend and Servant, C.D., 1843, Charles Dickens. A, a Christmas, Christmas Carol. Carol. Stave one. Old Scrooge sat in his counting house. The door to Scrooge's counting house was open so that he might keep an eye upon his clerk. Who in a dismal little tank, a sort of cell, was busy copying letters. Scrooge had a very small fire. But the clerk's fire was so very much smaller that it looked like one coal, but he couldn't replenish it. For Scrooge kept the coal box in his own room. And so surely as the clerk came in with the shovel, the master predicted it would be necessary for them to part. Wherefore the clerk put on his comforter and tried to warm himself at the candle, in which effort, not being a man of strong imagination, he failed. A Merry Christmas, Uncle! God save you! cried a cheerful voice. It was the voice of Scrooge's nephew. He came upon him so suddenly that this was the first <laughs> intimation he had of his approach. Bah! said Scrooge. Humbug! His nephew left the room without an angry word notwithstanding. He stopped at the outer door to bestow the greetings of the season on the clerk who, cold as he was, was warmer than Scrooge. This lunatic, in letting Scrooge's nephew out, had let two other gentlemen in. They were portly gentlemen, pleasant to behold, and now stood, with their hats off, in Scrooge's office. They had books, and papers, in their hands, and, and bowed to him. him. Uh, Scrooge and Marley's, I believe, said one of the gentlemen, referring to his list. Have I the pleasure of speaking to Mr. Scrooge or Mr. Marley? Mr. Mr. Marley has been dead these seven years. He died seven years ago this very night. Oh. It is uh, more than usually desirable, said the other gentleman, mm -hmm. taking up his pen, that uh, we give some slight provision for mm -hmm. the poor and destitute who suffer greatly at this present time. Are there no prisons? Are Scrooge? And the Union workhouses, are they still in full operation? Both very busy, sir. <laughs> we choose this time of year because it is a time of all other where want is keenly felt and abundance rejoices. Mm. What shall I put you down for? Nothing, replied Scrooge. Oh, you wish to remain anonymous? I wish to be left alone, said Scrooge. Ah, seeing that it would be useless to pursue their point, the gentleman withdrew. At length the hour of shutting up the counting house arrived. You'll want all day, I suppose, tomorrow, said Scrooge. Uh, if it's quite convenient, sir. It's not convenient, said Scrooge, and it's not fair. If I was to stop half a crown for it, you think yourself ill-used, I'll be bound. The clerk smiled faintly. And yet, you do not think me ill-used when I pay a day's wages for no work? Uh, the clerk observed that it was only once a year. Be here all the earlier the following morning. But the clerk promised that he 
boat. And Scrooge walked out with a growl and went home to bed. He lived in chambers which had belonged to his deceased partner. Scrooge heard a clanking noise deep down below as if some person were dragging a heavy chain across the casks in the wine merchant's cellar. The cellar door flew open with a booming sound. Marley's ghost! So, what do you want with me? Much. The spectre raised a cry and shook its chain and wrung its shadowy oh. hand. You are fetid, said Scrooge, trembling. Tell me why. I wear the chain I forged in life. Oh, would you know, pursued the ghost, the weight and length of the strong coil you bear yourself. You have labored on it since. It was as full and as heavy and as long as this seven Christmas Eves ago. You have labored on it since. It is a ponderous chain. Oh, tell me more, Jacob. Speak. Comfort to me, Jacob. You will be haunted by three spirits. Is that the chance and hope you spoke of, demanded Scrooge in a faltering voice? It is. I think I'd rather not, said Scrooge. Should you not accept this, you cannot hope to shun the path I tread. (laughs) Expect the first tomorrow when the bell tolls one. Stave two. The first of the three spirits. When the bell tolled one. One. The curtains of his bed were drawn aside. Who, who, uh, uh, and what are you? Scrooge demanded. I am the ghost of Christmas past. Long past, said Scrooge, (laughs) observant of its dwarfish stature. No, your past. Take heed. It put out its strong hand and clasped him gently by the arm. Rise and walk with me. They stopped at a certain warehouse door. He asked Scrooge if he knew it. Know it? Was I apprenticed here? (laughs) They went in. At sight of an old gentleman in a Welsh wig behind a high desk that if it had been two inches taller, he must have knocked his head against the ceiling. Why, it's old (laughs) Fezziwig, bless his heart. It's old Fezziwig alive again. Hey-ho, cried old Fezziwig, skipping down from the high desk with wonderful agility. Clear away, my lads. Let's have lots of room here. Hilly ho, Dick. Cheer up, Ebenezer. In came Mrs. Fezziwig, one vast substantial smile. In came the three Miss Fezziwigs, beaming and lovable. In came the six young followers whose hearts they broke. In came all the young men and women employed in the business. In came the housemaid with a cousin the baker. In came the cook. Uh. <laughs> Who, uh, with our brother's particular friend, the milkman? In came the boy from over the way, who is suspected of not having bored enough from his master, trying to hide himself behind... Behind the girl from next door but one, who would have proved to have had her ears pulled by her mistress. In they all came, one after, after another. another. Then old Fezziwig stood up to dance. With Mrs. Fezziwig? Fezziwig cut, cut so deftly. That he appeared to have winked with his legs. It came upon his feet without a stagger. (laughs) As the clock struck eleven, this domestic ball broke up. What is the matter? asked the ghost. Nothing, nothing in particular, said Scrooge. Something I think insisted the ghost. I, I should have just liked to have said a word or two to my clerk just now, that's all. <laughs> Remove me, Scrooge exclaimed. He turned upon the ghost and wrestled with it. <laughs> Take me back. Leave me. Haunt me no longer. Steve, three. The second of the spirits. Come in, said the ghost. Come in and know me better, man. I am the ghost of Christmas present. Look upon me. Touch, touch my robe. <laughs> oh, the room vanished instantly. And they reappeared upon the threshold of Bob Cratchit's dwelling. And in came little Bob the father, with at least three feet of comforter, exclusive of the fringe hanging down before him. 
and his threadbare clothes darned up and brushed to look seasonable, and... Tiny Tim upon his shoulder. Alas for Tiny Tim, he bore a little crutch mm. and had his limbs supported by an iron frame. <laughs> and how did little Tim behave, asked Mrs Crutchit? As good as gold, said Bob, and better. And then Bob proposed, <laughs> A Merry Christmas to us all, my dears, and God bless us. Which all, all the family, family re-echoed. God bless us every one, said Tiny Tim. Mm. He sat close beside his father upon his little stool. <laughs> Spirit, said Scrooge with an interest in his voice he had never felt before. Tell me, will Tiny Tim live? I see a vacant seat <gasps> in the chimney corner on a crutch without an owner, carefully preserved. No. Should these child, these shadows remain unaltered by the future, the child will die. My time upon oh. this globe is very brief, replied the ghost. It ends tonight. Tonight, cried Scrooge. Aye, tonight at midnight. Hark, the time is drawing near. <gasps> Scrooge looked about him for the spirit and saw it not. And then... After the last tone of the bell ceased to vibrate, he remembered the prediction of old Jacob Marley, and lifting his eyes beheld a solemn phantom draped and hooded, coming along the ground like a mist toward him. Stay for the last of the spirits. Oh, ghost of the future, I fear you more than any spectre I have met tonight. But as I know your purpose is to do me good, and as I want to live to be a better man from what I was, I am prepared to bear you company and do it with a thankful heart. <laughs> Will you not speak to me? It gave him no reply. The hand was pointed straight before him. Just as an old woman slunk into a shop with an heavy bundle. I'll do my bundle, Joe, said the woman. <laughs> what do you call this, said old Joe? <laughs> Bed curtains? <laughs> said the woman laughing, leaning forward on a crossed arms. Bed curtains. <laughs> you don't mean to tell me you took them down rings and all with him just lying there. Yeah, I do, replied the woman. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> you are bound to make your fortune, said old Joe, and you'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, spirit, spirit, <laughs> said Scrooge, trembling from head to foot. I, I, I see, I, I see, the, the, the case of this unhappy man might be my own. My, my life tends that way now. Spirit, show me some tenderness, tenderness connected with the death, cried Scrooge. And they entered the house of Bob Cratchit. The dwelling they had visited before. There was a chair set close by the child, and there were signs of someone having been there lately. Bob sat down in it, and after he thought for a little bit, had composed himself, he said, Spirit of Tiny Tim, thy childish essence was from God. Spirit! Spirit, I, I fear our, our parting moment is at hand. The spirit stood among the graves and pointed down to one. Ebenezer, Ebenezer Scrooge. Scrooge. Oh, no, 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 spirit, no. I will honor Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year. I will, I will live in the past, the present, and the future. Uh, uh, the spirits of all three shall strive within me. But he held up his hands in a blast prayer to have his fortune's eye reversed and noticed an, an alteration in the phantom's hood and dress. It shrunk, collapsed, and dwindled down into a bedpost. Steve, five. The end of it! Yes! And the bedpost was his own. Oh, I will live in the past, the present, and the future. The spirit of all three shall strive within me. Oh, Jacob, Marley, heaven, and the Christmas time be praised for this. Ooh, I'm as merry as a schoolboy. I'm as giddy as a drunken man. <laughs> you <-hoo. laughs> What day is it? Today? Mm -hmm. Why, it's Christmas Day! <laughs> it's Christmas 
then he said to himself, I haven't missed it. Oh, oh, oh. <clears throat> uh, uh, do you know the poulterers in the next street but one at the corner? Uh, oh, I should hope I did, replied the lad. <laughs> well, do you know if they have sold the big prize turkey hanging in the window? Not the little one, the big one. What? Well, the one as big as me? <laughs> What a delightful boy! It is a pleasure to talk to him. Yes, my buck. It's hanging there now. Is it? Go and buy it. Look up. I'll send it to Bob Cratchits. <clears throat> he uh, came along, the gentleman uh, from yesterday. Who had come into his <laughs> office and said, Scrooge and Marley's, I believe. <laughs> Scrooge uh, quickened his pace, taking the gentleman by both their hands. A Merry Christmas to you, sir. <laughs> I do hope you were successful yesterday. A Merry Christmas to you. Mr. Scrooge. <laughs> Here, Scrooge whispered into the gentleman's ear. <gasps> Lord bless me, said the gentleman, as if his breath had been taken away. My dear Mr. Scrooge, are you serious? Uh, if you please, my good sir, and not a farthing less. <laughs> In the afternoon, he turned his steps towards his nephew's house. <gasps> Why, bless my soul, cried Fred. Who's that? It is I, your Uncle Scrooge. <laughs> I have come to dinner. Wonderful party. Wonderful happiness. Oh, but he was <sighs> early in the office the next morning. Oh, but he was early there. He hoped that he would arrive before Bob Cratchit. That was the thing he set his heart upon him. And he did it. Yes, he did. Nine o'clock. No, Bob. A quarter past. No, Bob. He was a fool. Eighteen and a half minutes past his time. Oh, it shan't be repeated, said Bob, appearing from the tank. It only once a year, sir. I was making rather merry yesterday, sir. My dear sir, I will not stand for this sort of thing any longer. And therefore, said Scrooge, leaping from his stool and giving Bob such a dig in the whiskers oh. that he staggered back into the tank again. And therefore, I am about to raise your salary. A Merry Christmas, Bob, said Mr. Scrooge. A Merry Christmas that I have given you in many a year. I will raise your salary and endeavor to assist your struggling family. And we will discuss your affairs this very afternoon over a Christmas bowl of smoking oh, bishop. Smoking Bob, bishop. now buy another coal scuttle before you dot another I, Bob Cratchit. <laughs> <laughs> Scrooge was better than his word. He did it all and infinitely more. And to Tiny Tim, who did not die. <laughs> he was like a second father. And it was always said of him that he knew how to keep Christmas well, if any man alive knows the spirit. May that be truly said of us and all of us. And so, as Tiny Tim observed, God, God bless, bless us, everyone. everyone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the other Stuart. Got him again. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Drive safely. <laughs> What's the ice?